This unusual orchid, a hammer orchid. It could be coincidence that all the females are still underground when the orchid flowers, but it is quite beyond coincidence when the flower assumes the shape, mimics the body, and even gives off the scent of the female wasp. And this precisely when there are lots of sex-starved male wasps around. The hinge joint, the correct length of arm, a glistening sticky pad between two yellow pollen sacs at exactly the right distance from the dummy wasp must have been grown with incredible accuracy. It is perfect for a bizarre coupling of wasp with flower. Sufficiently deceived, he tries to fly off with her, but succeeds only in catapulting himself into the orchid's anthers. At last, his furry back peels off the yellow pollen-bearing sacks. He gives up and tears himself free. Although the go-between carries the pollen to other flowers, for the orchid's deception to work, he must visit another hammer orchid like the wasp visiting now, bringing male elements to receptive female parts. With pollen crushed into its stigma, the hammer orchid is fertilized. The little dummy female withers, its purpose served. The orchid's meager resources are now required for the swelling seed pod. The deception has worked perfectly, but does it always? If a female wasp mistimes her entrance, is around before all the orchids are pollinated, or if the orchid flowers late, is he fooled? Well, only for a second. It would be hard to visualize a world without the beauty of grasses. Few people realize that they too bear flowers. The anthers float their pollen through the air gambling that some may catch on the branching, crystal-like stigmas of the female. For grasses and most trees, sex is born on the wind. Huge pollen clouds breathing life onto everything. This blanket bombing, mass proliferation, is effective but incredibly wasteful. So why not an insect, a sort of go-between, to deliver it with that personal touch? There are millions of plants using energy, displaying flowers, showing readiness for pollination, crowding, bunching for the services of these little go-betweens, wanting to be noticed. So, as humans for a film festival, at Cannes or somewhere, they push it around, dress it up extravagantly in bright colors. It pays to advertise. Myriads of eye-catching shapes, designs and patterns as blatant and gaudy as Piccadilly Circus. And the insects bewitched and bedazzled, wondering whom to call on next, are given clear indications in their ultraviolet vision exactly where to go. It is not a cosy relationship, however, and it's not for love, alas. Flowers 
must pay for service, the hard cash currency of insects. Pollen itself highly nutritious. Nectar. Wax for certain stingless bees to make their cells. Or the plant can deceive its visitor by making the false offer of sexual satisfaction. It is said that the first biologist to discover this Australian ichneumon wasp actually releasing sperm into a flower it didn't dare publish their findings. But insects beware, you are being used. For there is a certain flower with which any association, however casual, can lead to certain death. As long as there are rewards for favors and services rendered, there will always be cheats. Those who want food for free, Large bumbles with their long tongues easily probe the nectar of comfrey. Telltale holes reveal where small bumblebees, unable to get at the nectar, have chewed with their strong jaws to pillage. And the honeybee soon learns to draw from the nectaries without entering the flower, without touching the reproductive part, without doing her stuff. So plants have developed quite amazing defensive strategies. The teasel going as far as thwarting thieving ants with a carefully constructed water trap or moat. Or consider this ginger. It actually employs ants to guard the flower against plunder by the wrong visitor. And they are paid from nectaries evolved especially for the ants' use. Give a little, take a little. There's a rationale. But in nature, what appear to be cozy understandings come in fact from the pursuit of ruthless self-interest. The most seemingly innocent offerings can sometimes be deadly. The African water lily, on the second day of its life, quite, quite harmless. And what a feast! Hundreds of stamens, all capped with pollen, like giant lollipops. And away he flies. But what a difference.